the Nürburgring. With over 20 kilometers length, the racetrack, reverently called Green Hell, winds through the forests of the Eiffel region. Opened in 1927, the Nürburgring quickly gained the reputation of being the most demanding racetrack in the world. Since then, the racetrack has been attracting daring race drivers to beat it. The series, Racing in the Green Hell, is dedicated to those people who face the Nürburgring challenge and write history. The 2018 edition of the 24-hour race is packed with drama. Pouring rain, fog, a race stoppage and restart. A hard-fought duel between two competitors. And in the end, the sixth overall victory for Manti Racing. At the same time, the successful racing team comes full circle. Martin and Nicky Rader, the successors of company founder Olaf Mantai, win the prestigious Nürburgring race for the first time. More than five decades before, the Nürburgring is flourishing in the post-war era. For the first time, young Olaf Mantai is taken to the racetrack by his parents and is immediately bitten by the motorsport bug. I was at the Nürburgring Nordschleife with my father to watch Formula One races and sports car races in the late 60s. And I just knew from the start that this was what I wanted to do one day. Early on, also Olaf Manti's technical interest in the vehicles is aroused. When I was 17, I already owned my first car. It was a Fiat 500 that I was tinkering with, of course, working on cylinder heads, the exhaust system, carburetor and so on. I also went to the Nürburgring with it and drove on the Nordschleife when I didn't even have a driver's license yet. From then on, cars and racetracks are an essential part of Olaf Manti's life. In 1974, he enters his first race in Dutch Zandvoort. I was completely hooked then. It just had to go on, no matter what. I saved everything I could, built the cars myself, and then went to the racetracks with my friends. In the following years, Olaf Manti is a permanent guest on nearby racetracks. Soon, he celebrates successes in different touring cars. Formula cars also appeal to Manti, so he competes in the Formula Super Foul European Championship for one season. However, as he simply feels more at home with touring cars, he keeps on gaining experiences and successes with these. I got my first works contract from Austin Rover in Germany in 1984. That was also the beginning of the DTM. Here too, Manti is at the very front, becomes vice champion in 1984 and 1985. All that with the double burden of making a living with a regular job in between races. I had a main job. Mechanical engineering. Unfortunately, in that profession, I hadn't been able to find a boss who would grant me that much leave for all the races. So, I began working for a haulage company with excavators, caterpillars, lorries, concrete pumps. That's how Manti earns the nickname Germany's fastest excavator driver. Besides the legendary DTM racing competitions and the Porsche Carrera Cup, it is especially the Nürburgring Nordschleife races that are most memorable for Manti. 
Wer einmal Whoever has once driven on the Nordschleife doesn't need any more explanations. You just can't explain the Nordschleife to anyone. They have to experience it. I drove thousands of laps here with so many different cars. There just is no perfect lap. In my earlier days, when you got off track, you would just go through the hedges. No one could see you anymore once you were off track, standing behind those hedges. The absolute highlight of every year on the Nordschleife is the 24-hour race. Especially memorable is the race with Hans-Joachim Stuck and Walter Roll in 1992. It was incredibly foggy that night. You really couldn't see a thing anymore. When I was on the track, I would open the door and drive along the white track marks because you couldn't see anything straight ahead. Walter Roll bumped into Piro, who was driving the Schnitzer M3. He overtook him. And as soon as he was in front of him, he shut off his lights. So Piro couldn't use his tail lights as orientation. You really need guts to pull that off. Mantai is also a permanent guest in the Endurance Championship, fighting for overall victories Saturday after Saturday. Often he shares the cockpit with Uli Richter. Uli wasn't slow. He was a good driver who showed, especially on the Nordschleife, what he was capable of, and then got an offer from Mercedes. With the 190, he entered the Endurance Championships on the Nordschleife. Something no one thought could be done with this car, not even the people at Mercedes. Soon, the 190 doesn't only become one of the fan favorites, but a feared opponent in the competition for daily victories. The duo, Manti Richter, is pretty much a guarantee for success. Together, the drivers achieve a total of 56 overall victories. In addition to the successful races on the Nürburgring, the racing team Manti Racing is officially founded in Bad Hönef in 1996. In a small workshop with 400 square meters, four racing cars, the Porsche 993, and then we entered the Porsche Super Cup. Four times in succession, Manti Racing accomplishes the feat of winning the brand trophy that is held as part of the Formula One races. The first race for Porsche Works in Le Mans is quite successful as well. Moving the Manti Racing team to the Nürburgring in 2000 is the first step towards developing the business further. We opened the company near the Nürburgring because we also wanted to extend the business to the ambitious Porsche drivers who are driving on the Nordschleife. The beginning of 2001 is dominated by entering the DTM with Mercedes. The year takes a tragic turn, however. During the Endurance Championship, once again the dangers of the Nordschleife are all too painfully recalled by Uli Richter's fatal accident. Uli Richter's accident, that was the worst thing I have ever had to experience here on the track. The drivers, especially the professionals, know the track that they are on, know that they aren't immune to making mistakes. Those mistakes don't even need to be their own. They could be mistakes made by others, but that just happens in motorsports. Motorsports will always be dangerous, so you have to keep thinking about making things a bit safer. The 24-hour race is the absolute highlight on the Nürburgring Nordschleife, and yet the biggest challenge of the green hell. A big mixed grid, capricious weather conditions, day and night changes, all that on the world's longest and most challenging racetrack. Numerous times, Olaf Manti has participated in the Eiffel Racing Marathon, won a place on the podium, but a victory is not granted until the end of his active driver's career in 2005. We never won a 24-hour race here on our home circuit before. That wasn't granted until 2006. 
The team's Porsche 911 GT3 MR is the measure of all things in 2006. Due to a lot of fine tuning and optimization, the strong drivers Lucas Luhr, Timo Bernhard, Mike Rockefeller, and Marcel Thiemann, and the right tactics, they finally achieved their first overall victory in a 24 hour race on their home circuit. Yeah, that's... That was really amazing, of course. Unfortunately, I wasn't a driver anymore, as I had finished my driving career in 2005. But accomplishing it as the team manager was, of course, quite a different story. The team has finally caught on. What follows is one of the greatest string of successes in the history of the Nürburgring 24-hour race. We won again for the second time in 2007, which just seemed crazy. I had pursued this goal for all these years and came in second and third so many times. In 2007, Manti Racing enters a race with the new Porsche model 997 for the first time. The Nordschleifer makes every effort to make winning a near impossible task. Strong competitors, heavy downpour, plus a delayed start, fog, and a race interruption at night time. Still, they successfully manage to defend their title. In the later course of the year, Olaf and his wife Renata are struck by a blow of fate that shakes the very foundations of their work. There was a turning point in 2007, when our son had a fatal accident. My wife and I sat together, thinking, why should we go on? We honestly considered shutting down the business and quitting. But I also have to say that you carry a responsibility for your employees. Especially those employees who worked with me in the workshop back then. Not only for eight hours a day. We all worked 10 to 12 hours a day and they all did it without complaint. And when my son had this fatal accident, our guys helped us so much. They were so overwhelmingly supportive that we decided we couldn't shut down the business. We had a responsibility for them. They were making every effort for our company. So we said that life had to go on and we would continue. It was hard enough as it was, but I think it was worth it. The way back to the racetrack is a hard one, but at the same time it gave Renata and Olaf Mantai a purpose in these times. Then came 2008. Then came 2008. Before the race start, Uli Passaus, one of our mechanics, approached me and said, if we rock this thing for the third time, you need to get rid of your moustache. As I was pretty sure that it wouldn't happen a third time, I accepted the bet, of course. From pole position, racing number one enters the race with Timo Bernhard, Mark Lieb, Romain Dumas and Marcel Thiemann. In the first lap, however, everything seems lost already. Smoke development in the Porsche. Immediate boxing. A hose has gotten loose. Being behind two laps, they finally get back into the race. What follows is the most spectacular chase in the history of the 24-hour race. In the end, Manti Racing comes in first and second, their third overall victory in succession. And by Sunday afternoon, my moustache was gone. I was sitting on the sofa with my wife in winter 2008, watching television 
and recalling how fortunate we had been. Winning the Porsche Super Cup four times, the Le Mans GT Class, now the Nürburgring 24-hour race three times in a row. So I said to my wife, why shouldn't it work out as it has with the Super Cup? We have won that one four times in a row. In keeping with the motto, never change a winning team, the yellow Manti Porsche enters the race again with the same driver quartet in 2009. But the competition doesn't go easy on the defending champions. The race is characterized by a fierce struggle for the overall victory. Bernhard, Lee, Dumas and Thiemann manage the impossible with a distance record. They win the 24-hour race for the fourth time in succession. God allowed us to win for the fourth time in 2009. Even the greatest winning streak has to end. One year later, starting number one is in the lead again, but this time the team from Muspa is not favoured with fortune. A collision incurred through no fault of their own and ends the race for the defending champions. The victory goes to the BMW team Schnitzer Motorsport. I remember that day very well. I was allowed to present the trophy for the overall victory to Schnitzer, to Charlie Lamb. When I handed it over, I pulled the trophy back again for a moment and told him, I am getting this one back again next year. One year later, Olaf Mantai turns rhetoric into action, leaving nothing to chance. He deploys two Porsche 911s. One is the old victorious RSR model, the other is the new GT3R. Driving both cars, Mark Lee, Lucas Lure, Romain Dumas and Timo Bernhard. The new car loses by comparison to the old and is retired. From now on, the focus is on the RSR. With this strategy, they claim the fifth overall victory in their sixth 24-hour race, a record that is unmatched to date. At the absolute peak of their success, the question arises for Olaf Mantai as to how things are going to proceed in the future. Still, there is no successor to continue the racing team. The firma had in the years between eight I could have sold the company between 2008 and 2012. I had several opportunities, but I didn't have a good feeling with either of those options I had for the long term. Of course, I wanted my wife's and my life's work to still exist many, many years from now. With exceptional vehicle concept, brothers Nicky and Martin Rader build up a reputation in endurance races around the Nürburgring. That is how they catch the eye of Olaf Mantai as well. I have been watching the boys for a while as they have been driving endurance races on the Nürburgring. They really gained my respect by building the Lamborghini entirely on their own. I thought, boy, they really have courage. The Raider brothers accomplished quite a special feat in the VLN six-hour race in 2011 with the front-wheel drive Audi TT RS, which they build on their own. Raider Motorsport wins the race and beats the much more powerful rear-wheel drive competitors. The first to congratulate them on that day, Olaf Manta. We were so proud of that. At home, Martin told our parents about it. Our mother is pretty resourceful. We didn't know what she was up to. Our mother found it was quite charming of Olaf Mantai, so she somehow figured out his email address and sent him a message saying how proud her sons were that his congratulations had been like accolades for us. I wrote her that I could very well imagine those two boys as my successors. A short time passed until we received a two, three-page email from Olaf Mantai, written, very personal, addressed to our mother. We thought, okay, there seems to be the need for talks and 
That is basically how our first talks came about and how Manti Racing and Raider Motorsport merged in 2013. With the merger of Manti Racing and Raider Motorsport, Porsche also participates in the company with a share of 51%. For the company, that step means great future and development opportunities. At the same time, Nikki and Martin Raider have big footsteps to follow. I have seen many company owners hand over their companies to a younger generation for reasons of age, but who in my opinion, sometimes made the mistake of forcing their management style on the younger generation. I said to myself, that's not going to happen to me. Those two were really a lucky find for me. They don't talk big. They shine with results. That is my motto as well. They are doing a fantastic job. The business has grown a whole lot. From the beginning, Nikki and Martin Raider are able to live up to past successes and diversify the business. They take on more and more important tasks for Porsche in the following years. Together with Porsche, Manti Racing has been doing WEC races in the name of Porsche since 2013. But we supply the whole infrastructure, the pit crew, the spare parts supply. That is all done from Moispart. In the very first year after the merger, Manti Racing manages to make the Porsche works entry a successful one by coming in first and second in the GT class. In 2015, they even managed to win the title in the WEC GT class. At the same time, Nikki and Martin Raider develop the business further and establish new pillars for Manti Racing. We have a motorsports center in Moispart. By now, we have 170 employees, which is a huge responsibility for each one of them. We are aware of that. It is one of the reasons Manti Racing diversified the business. Manti Racing's business model is based on five pillars. The Porsche Works Sports, Customer Sports, the Porsche Racing Experience, Streetcar Sports, plus the Motorsports Products and Services. I think we managed quite well to build a versatile and diversified business. Outsiders still hadn't realized that I wasn't the team manager anymore and no longer involved in the day-to-day -day business and that a new generation had taken over with Martin and Nicky Raider. That is why, during races, even the 24-hour race, I stayed only in the lounge. I didn't even go down to the pits. Olaf Manti has left especially big footprints at these 24-hour races on the Nürburgring. The merger in 2013 with Olaf and his five overall victories was an even bigger incentive for us to win the race ourselves. It finally works out in 2018. For the first time, it is Nicky and Martin Raider who claim the trophy for Manti Racing. It was a huge relief for us to finally win the 24-hour race on the Nürburgring. I think it took me a couple of days to actually realize it. Only a few weeks later, they managed the GTE double victory in Le Mans, a crowning achievement of the motorsports year 2018. They had to follow in pretty big footsteps, and they did a great job. They had a double victory in Le Mans, won the 24-hour race on the Nürburgring. By now, everyone should have understood that these two are the boss now. From young Olaf Manti's motorsports passion to an internationally successful motorsports business, Manti Racing has experienced enormous growth in the past decades. The company's present day structure and size alone play an important part in the Nürburgring's development as well. Now it is up to Martin and Nicky Raider to lead the company into the future. Where are we headed for? Well, 
We have visions and ideas, of course. A lot of them. We aim to further develop our areas of business. A great goal is, of course, to build a base for the company that's as solid as possible, to make it sustainable so we can offer security of employment. Considering our headcount, this is a much bigger focus than it was with 10 or 15 employees in the workshop or the company. We won't lose sight of that. It's a really important point for us.